Story recapped here. Today, I'm going to explain a drama, fantasy, war film called Pan's Labyrinth. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. In 1944, after the Civil War, rebels fight against the new fascist regime in the mountains of Spain. Military posts are deployed to battle against the resistance. In the underground realm, a princess who dreams of the human world escapes to the surface. As soon as she sees the sun, her memories are erased. With no memories, the princess's body suffers from sickness and dies. Her father, the king, patiently waits for her to be reincarnated in the human world. In Spain, Ophelia travels with her pregnant mother, Carmen, who thinks Ophelia is too old for fairy tales. Carmen feels sick and stops the car to rest. As her mother rests, Ophelia wanders down the road, picking up a peculiar rock. Then, she finds a stone carving and places the rock she found on it, completing the image. A large insect comes out of the stone and flies away, just as Carmen calls for Ophelia. As they head back to the car, Carmen reminds Ophelia to show respect to the captain, who is now her stepfather. The car arrives at the military camp, where Carmen's new husband, Captain Vidal, welcomes her warmly. Ophelia stretches her hand out to shake Vidal's hand, but he grips it tightly, scolding her for using the wrong hand. He orders the housekeeper, Mercedes, to bring their luggage in before leaving. Once he and her mother are gone, Ophelia follows the large insect down a labyrinth near the camp. But Mercedes stops her from going further and takes her back to camp. That evening, Vidal strategizes in smoking out the rebels. Mercedes brings their food, getting a peek at the map where Vidal marks the new command posts. Meanwhile, the camp's doctor, Dr. Ferrero, gives Carmen medicine to help her sleep. When he leaves, Mercedes quietly informs him that a patient's wound is getting worse. Dr. Ferrero secretly hands her a package before leaving to meet with Captain Vidal. After he leaves, Mercedes finds Ophelia watching her, feeling troubled. Ophelia closes the door and joins her mother in bed. However, she can't sleep, worried about the house's creaking and her mother's marriage to the captain. To help them sleep, Ophelia tells her unborn brother a story. Her story is about a sad world where a rose sits atop a black mountain. Whoever plucks the rose will become immortal, but its thorns are poisonous, preventing anyone from reaching it. The rose dies, unable to pass its gift to anyone. Below them, Dr. Ferrero arrives at Vidal's room, reporting Carmen's poor health, but the baby remains well. This satisfies Vidal, who insists that the baby is a boy and he should be present when his son is born, despite the fact that Carmen's travels led to her poor condition. Outside, Vidal meets with a father and his son, who were captured after the soldiers heard gunshots. The father and son were found with a gun that's been recently fired. The son insists that his father was only hunting rabbits. Unconvinced, Vidal checks the man's bag and finds suspicious notes and a bottle of liquor. Vidal swings the bottle against the son's face and bashes his head with it before shooting the father on the chest. None of the soldiers flinch at their captain's actions. Vidal continues to inspect the man's bag, finding a dead rabbit inside. He warns his soldiers to search the suspects first before bringing them to him. In Ophelia and Carmen's bedroom, the sound of fluttering wakes Ophelia. At the foot of the bed, she finds the strange insect that transforms into a fairy. The fairy leads Ophelia down the labyrinth, guiding her between the confusing walls. They reach a stairway that leads to a cave with an ornate stone at the center. A creature rejoices at her presence, releasing more fairies that hover around Ophelia. It introduces itself as the fawn, bowing to her and calling her Princess Moana. Ophelia tries to correct him, but the fawn insists, claiming that the mark on her shoulder is the proof. It tells her about the king who opened the portals, including the cave, so her soul could return. The fawn tells Ophelia that she must complete three tasks before the full moon to prove that her soul isn't mortal. It gives her the Book of Crossroads, which she can only read when she's alone. The book will show her what tasks she must accomplish. The fawn disappears behind the shadows, leaving Ophelia with the blank book. The following morning, Vidal orders Mercedes to cook the rabbits he took from the father and son. She takes it to the kitchen before drawing a hot bath for Ophelia. While alone in the bathroom, Ophelia takes the book of crossroads hidden behind the radiator. Pictures and words magically appear in the book, entrancing Ophelia and making her lose track of time. She snaps out of it when Carmen knocks on the door, telling her to hurry up. Ophelia inspects her shoulder in the mirror, where a crescent-shaped birthmark is. The magical book and the fawn's knowledge of her birthmark convince Ophelia that she is the reincarnated princess. In the kitchen, the helpers prepare for the dinner party when Ophelia walks in. The women compliment her beautiful dress, which Carmen personally sewed for tonight. While Mercedes milks a cow, Ophelia talks about the fairies and fawn that she met, but Mercedes suggests that she shouldn't trust fawns. Vidal calls for Mercedes, interrupting them. A new batch of food, medicine, and tobacco has arrived, requiring Mercedes to give Vidal the only key to the storeroom. Ophelia walks into the woods, reading the first story from the Book of Crossroads. It tells her about a dying giant fig tree that used to house magical creatures in the forest. Ophelia looks up, seeing the same tree from the book in front of her. A monstrous toad resides under the tree's roots, preventing it from thriving. She must feed the toad three magic stones and retrieve a golden key from its belly to save the tree. Noticing her muddy shoes, Ophelia leaves her new dress on a branch before going inside the tree. Once she leaves, a gust of wind blows a ribbon off her dress. 
Up in the mountains, Bethal's troop follows smoke that leads them to an abandoned campfire. He finds a broken package on the grass with a bottle of antibiotics inside. Dudal hears something from a distance, and he calls out, daring the rebels to retrieve their medicine. When there's no response, they leave while the rebel group watches them from a distance. Inside the tree, Ophelia crawls on the mud filled with bugs until she finds the giant toad. The toad eats a bug from her face, then burps loudly. Ophelia checks her hand, finding a bug among the stones she's carrying. She offers the bug to the toad, then puts it back among the stones. The toad happily takes and eats them. Upon swallowing the stones, the toad throws up its insides, where Ophelia finds the golden key. She heads out and finds her new dress has fallen into the muddy ground. The rain pours as Vidal welcomes their guests. During dinner, the guests complain about receiving only one food rations per family, but the captain insists on making sure no one shares the rations with the rebels. Vidal shows them the antibiotic they found, leading them to believe that one of the rebels is wounded. Dr. Ferrero and Mercedes share a troubled look. Mercedes leaves, telling the other helpers that she'll look for more wood for the fire. Away from the soldier's eyes, she uses light to send a message to someone in the woods. When she turns, she finds Ophelia covered in mud. Back in the dining room, Carmen shares how she met Vidal after she took over her late husband's task in making his uniforms. The women are curious about her story, prompting the captain to apologize on Carmen's behalf for sharing their mundane story. Mercedes reports that Ophelia is back, leading Carmen to excuse herself from dinner. Carmen scolds Ophelia for ruining the dress and tells her that she and the captain are disappointed in her. Later that evening, Ophelia returns to the labyrinth, where the fawn tells her to keep the key and gives her a piece of chalk. The fawn promises that she will walk into her palace after she finishes her other tasks. However, upon remembering what Mercedes said, Ophelia starts to doubt the fawn. The next day, Ophelia heads to the bathroom to check the book. But instead of a task, the pages turn red, warning her of danger. Ophelia walks out of the bathroom, finding her mother covered in blood. That afternoon, Dr. Ferrero advises the captain to have Carmen on bed rest until she gives birth. At his recommendation, Ophelia is moved into the attic to give her mother peace. Mercedes comforts her as Ophelia claims she will never have a baby, seeing what it did to her mother. Ophelia reveals that she knows that Mercedes is helping the rebels, promising that she hasn't told anyone. That evening, Mercedes sneaks into the kitchen and retrieves letters and a can from a hidden compartment. She and Dr. Ferrero meet up with the rebel group in the woods, led by Mercedes's brother, Pedro. At dawn, the fawn visits Ophelia in her new bedroom, asking why she hasn't done the next task yet. Hearing that Ophelia's mother is sick, the fawn gives her a mandrake root and instructs her to place it under Carmen's bed inside a bowl of milk. She must give it two drops of blood daily to cure her mother. The fawn also lends her the fairies to guide her on her next task. It warns her about a creature that she'll meet, which will offer her a feast that she shouldn't drink or eat. In the mountains, the rebels take Mercedes and Dr. Ferrero to their hideout. Mercedes gives the men supplies while Dr. Ferrero tends to the wounded man. Seeing the wound worse, Dr. Ferrero decides to amputate the leg. Back at the camp, Ophelia reads the task from the Book of Crossroads. She draws a door on the wall using the fawn's chalk and opens it. Inside, she sets down a chair to help her climb down, then turns an hourglass to mark her time. She must return before the last sand on the hourglass falls, without eating or drinking anything inside. She walks into the strange hallway, finding the table full of food. At the end of the table is a strange pale creature with its eyes on a plate. On the ceiling, paintings portray how the pale man lured children with a scrumptious feast before devouring them. A pile of abandoned children's shoes confirms this story. Ophelia releases the fairies, who show her a set of small locked doors. With a golden key, she opens one of the doors and retrieves a dagger inside. Ophelia passes by the table again but suddenly becomes interested in the grapes. The fairies warn her, but Ophelia swats them away. She takes a grape and eats it, waking up the pale man at the end of the table. It puts its eyes on its hands then looks around. Ophelia enjoys the grapes, ignoring the fairy's warning of the creature behind her. When the fairies distract the pale man, Ophelia finally notices that it's awake. The pale man eats two of the fairies, allowing Ophelia time to escape. She runs down the hall, seeing the door close before she reaches it. She tries to draw a new door, but the chalk breaks. With trembling fingers, she draws another door on the ceiling. As the creature reaches for her, Ophelia climbs into the ceiling, escaping to her bedroom just before the pale man could grab her. Meanwhile, the rebel group heads down the mountain as Pedro tells the doctor about reinforcements that will help them fight Vidal's men. But the doctor isn't convinced, knowing that the government will send more men after they defeat Vidal. He tells Pedro to take Mercedes out of the border and keep her safe instead. But Pedro is adamant about the cause. Mercedes gives Pedro a copy of the key to the storeroom but warns him not to go yet. Back in the camp, Ophelia prepares the mandrake root for her mother. The root comes to life upon being set on the bowl of milk, copying her mother's actions. Ophelia takes it under the bed and bites her finger to give it blood. While she's there, Vidal and the doctor arrive, noting that Carmen is finally responding to the medicine. Vidal tells the doctor that if it comes to choosing between Carmen's or the baby's life, he must save the baby instead. Ophelia hears this, worrying for her mother. The sound of explosions alerts them. Vidal checks outside, seeing fire and smoke coming from afar. 
Meanwhile, Ophelia climbs out from under the bed and talks to her unborn brother. She begs him to come out without hurting their mother, promising to make him a prince in her kingdom if he spares Carmen. The soldiers find a wrecked train, blown up by the rebels, but the cargo remains untouched. Another explosion alerts them that the camp is in danger. The rebels have infiltrated the camp and raided the storeroom. The doll checks the lock, seeing that it's suspiciously undamaged. The soldiers continue to fight the rebels in the woods, with the doll taking the lead. After defeating the rebels, they find one alive and bring him to the storeroom for questioning. Upon hearing this, Mercedes goes to check, worried that it's Pedro. She catches a glimpse of the captive but discovers that it's not her brother. Mercedes remains distracted while working in the kitchen. She takes some milk and bread to Carmen's room, who's being tended by Dr. Ferrero. Carmen refuses the sedative, convinced that she's feeling better. Meanwhile, in the storeroom, Vidal interrogates the stuttering captive. He dares the captive to count to three without stuttering, and if he does so, he will be free. The captive fails, provoking Vidal to swing a hammer to his face. That evening, the fawn visits Ophelia in her room again. Ophelia thanks it for curing her mother but apologizes for getting the fairies eaten. The only living fairy tells the fawn what happened, and the incident angers it. Ophelia hands it the dagger and profusely apologizes for eating the grapes. But the fawn is furious, claiming that she failed and will become mortal. It disappears, not interested in helping her any further. The next day, Dr. Ferrero is called in to heal the wounded captive. He checks the man's broken hand while Vidal finds a bottle of antibiotics in the doctor's bag, similar to the one from the rebels camp. When Vidal leaves, the captive warns the doctor that he gave the captain information. He begs the doctor to kill him to spare him from suffering. In his office, Vidal compares the rebels' medicine with the doctor's, seeing the match. As they prepare to arrest the doctor, he hears something from Carmen's room. Vidal pulls Ophelia from under Carmen's bed, seeing the mandrake root. Carmen wakes up to Vidal scolding her daughter. Vidal blames her for letting Ophelia believe in nonsense like magic. When he leaves, Carmen tells Ophelia to listen to Vidal, but Ophelia cries, wanting to leave the camp. Carmen burns the mandrake root despite Ophelia's protests, insisting that magic doesn't exist. In the fire, the root squeals in pain, and as it does, Carmen collapses. At the storeroom, Vidal finds that the doctor has euthanized the captive. Dr. Ferrero claims that it's the only thing he could do, angering him. As the doctor leaves, the doll shoots him on the back, the doctor takes a few more steps before collapsing. Upon his death, the helpers announce that Carmen is in labor. Bloodied sheets are taken out of the bedroom as Carmen screams in pain. The doll and a tearful Ophelia wait outside until the troop's paramedic announces Carmen's death, but tells them that the baby survived. After Carmen's funeral the next day, Ophelia tidies up her mother's room, taking the bottle of the sedative from her table. She lingers in front of Carmen's empty wheelchair, missing her mother. That evening, Vidal shares to Mercedes that there's still a rebel informant in their camp. The indirect threat frightens her. He orders her to get more liquor from the storeroom but stops her, reminding her that he still has the only key to the storeroom. Vidal notes that when they were under siege, the lock to the storeroom wasn't broken. Mercedes doesn't respond and takes the key before leaving. Knowing that the captain suspects her, Mercedes takes her things from under the kitchen then bids Ophelia goodbye. She denies taking Ophelia with her at first but is convinced that the child isn't safe there. The two leave the camp but are blocked by Vidal and his men. Vidal drags Ophelia back to her room, slapping her for not telling him about Mercedes. He locks the crying girl in her bedroom while he interrogates Mercedes in the storeroom. Vidal takes the letters from Mercedes' bag and orders to gather the people who wrote them. While Vidal prepares to torture her, Mercedes cuts herself loose using the kitchen knife hidden under her apron. Mercedes stabs Vidal on the back, then on the chest. She threatens him for harming Ophelia before cutting his face and escaping. Outside, the soldiers notice Mercedes leave but think that Vidal released her. When the wounded Vidal comes out, he orders them to chase after her. Mercedes runs to the woods, followed by soldiers on horseback. Cornered and outnumbered, Mercedes threatens to cut her own throat, thinking they were ordered to take her alive. Suddenly, Pedro arrives with reinforcement, rescuing his sister from the soldiers. Meanwhile, the fawn revisits Ophelia. Seeing it, Ophelia runs to its arms, glad to see a friend. The fawn tells her to take her baby brother to the labyrinth, giving her another chalk to escape. The captain stitches his own wounded cheek in his room while Ophelia sneaks inside. She hides behind a table, leaving the chalk on top of it as Vidal pours himself a drink. He notices the chalk on his table, crushing it in his hands, then searches for the intruder. A soldier interrupts him, announcing that his lieutenant is back, wounded. They leave the room, allowing Ophelia to pour sedatives into Vidal's drink. In the dining room, Vidal learns that the rest of the soldiers who followed Mercedes are dead. The rebels have recruited at least 50 men, while Vidal's group is down to less than 20 men. Meanwhile, Ophelia takes her brother, then hides when Vidal returns. He drinks the glass of liquor just before an explosion brings his attention to the door, where Ophelia stands, clutching her brother. He orders her to leave the baby, but she refuses. The sedative starts to work, making Vidal tumble in his steps. Ophelia flees, seeing the battle outside. The rebels are taking over his camp, but Vidal focuses on retrieving his son. Ophelia reaches the labyrinth with Vidal on her tail. He clambers around, struggling to focus. 
The walls open for Ophelia to reach the staircase then closes when Vidal reaches it. The fawn celebrates Ophelia's success, but she suspects the dagger in its hand. A drop of innocent blood from the baby is needed to open the portal to the kingdom, but Ophelia refuses, worried about her brother. The fawn is furious that she would give up her throne for the baby, not warning Ophelia that Vidal has arrived behind her. Vidal, who doesn't see the fawn, takes the baby from her arms then shoots Ophelia on the stomach. Vidal exits the labyrinth, blocked by the rebel group outside. He gives his son to Mercedes, asking her to tell his son the exact time that he died. Mercedes tells him that his son will not even know his name before Pedro shoots the captain, finally ending their battle. Inside the labyrinth, Mercedes finds Ophelia's body. Ophelia's blood drips inside the cave below, reaching the carved stone that opens the portal. Suddenly, Ophelia wakes up in a large palace court where the king and queen sit on their thrones. The king praises her sacrifice to spill her own blood rather than the blood of another innocent, thus completing the final task. The fawn emerges and bows to her. The queen invites her to sit on her throne as the palace applauds the return of their princess. In the labyrinth, Ophelia dies with a smile as Mercedes weeps for her. Ophelia, now reborn as Princess Moana, reigns with a kind heart in the underworld for many centuries to come. Despite her brief life as another being, the traces of her time on Earth remain visible to those who know where to look. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.